We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Batten Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Back here at Groob Field. And ready for the National Anthem Rams. We'll be on the third base line where the archers are headed to the first base side. playing of our national anthem. Presentation of our nation's national anthem. Rams and the Hunter Greens today with the white numbers and lettering and black trim. Gray uniform bottoms and the the Hunter Green cap with the ram head on it. Antwerp in the blue tops with silver trim and black outlines and the gray pants with the blue caps. Beautiful day for baseball. Finally, first time in about a week here at Tenora. We've played three or four games where it's been drizzly and wet. Especially there's one Tuesday versus Ayersville. <laughs> it's just horrible here. I was trying to find some stats for Luke. He's had Luke Krause. Appeared in 12 games for Bowling Green. He's 0-1. Pitched in 20 in the third innings pitch, giving up 21 hits, allowed 16 earned runs. Walked nine and struck out 14. So for just a freshman, Luke's doing pretty well. Actually, has a batting average against of 259. And he has not made an appearance in the field, so. Luke's a freshman at Bowling Green along with Rigo Ramos from Archibald, who I think Rigo is probably a junior or senior by now. Set the Rams defensively. Rams at 10 and 3, 4 and 2 in the GMC. We said this is a final GMC contest, kind of a log jam for second place. Wayne Trace clinched the GMC at Edgerton on Tuesday. They are 6 and 0. Oh. Tenora, Edgerton, and Antwerp all 4 and 2. Edgerton is at Fairview. Wayne Trace, and as a playoff game was last night, Wayne Trace and Paulding, and Ayersville and Hicksville. Yeah, so Wayne Trace and Paulding, for whatever reason, played the last night. Well, has a makeup game or what? I don't really see too many Wednesday games in the area, unless it's absolutely a necessity for, for makeup and tournament seating. The girls' draw is coming up Sunday, then the boys' tournament draw will be the following Sunday. For the Rams defensively, Eli Plasman will be on the mound. Eli, one and one, ERA of 1.80, 23 in a third innings pitch, 16 runs, six earned runs. He's allowed 25 hits. He's walked 11 and struck out 14. It's a 
Coming in is Parker Moore for the Archers. Senior righty, Plasman on the mound. Winds it up, first pitch. Just a bit low. First pitch right at five o'clock here at Stonewall High School. David Frank temperature, 62 degrees. Plasman's 1-0 pitch. Outside corner, strike called. Count evens at one and one. Moore, Ultimus, and Reed Leasty, the first, first three batters to face Plasman. Tap it right back to Eli, off the mound. Third base side, throws over to Hunter Bosselman in time to get Parker Moore. Up to the plate, number seven. One three on the put out. Carson Ultimus gonna step in. Ultimus, bats from the left side of the plate. Junior shortstop. Plasman winds, fires. First pitch just outside the bag at first. First base coach down there tries to snag it. Goes through his arms. We'll set the Rams defense here in a split second. Plasman's 0-1 coming to Carson Ultimus. Chuck Swing stays a bit high. Dalton Wolfram behind the plate. Hunter Bossom at first. Luke Harris at second. Caden Radzik at short. Taron Ward at third. Outfield, left to right. Mosier, Gus Weiler, and Wolfram. Connor Wolfram in right. 1-1 one, one pitch. It hits in front of the plate. Two balls and one strike to Ultimus. Ultimus setting all kinds of records as the Archer quarterback the last couple seasons, breaking some of his older brother's records. Two one pitch coming to Ultimus. High and away, ball three. Got some numbers we'll try and give you when we have a little extended period to give you some. About the last four years of the Antwerp program. Three one is swung on and miss. We're talking boys sports, football, basketball, and baseball. It's kind of it's absolutely astonishing some of the numbers. Full count pitch coming to Ultimus. Plasman winds up, throws. Hit foul territory. First baseman Bosselman underneath it, puts it away. Just behind the coach's box for out number two, retiring Carson Ultimus. Number four, Reed Leachty. Reed steps in. Reed bats from the left side as well. One two combo for the Archers on the gridiron. First pitch to Reed is a little bit low. Ball one. Wind blowing from right to left here on this Thursday. 1-0 pitch coming to Reed is high and away. Ball two. Rain tomorrow. I don't think there's any game scheduled. And then Saturday, Rams are playing at Kaleida. 2-0 pitch, swung on and miss. Strike one, two balls on one strike to the pitcher, Reed Leachty. Reed will be on the mound for Coach Feesby. But Saturday, rain permitting, the Rams are supposed to travel to Kaleida and take on the Wildcats. Pitch fouled back to the screen. Count goes two balls and two strikes. Seats are being installed, but talking with Adam Huber, the athletic director at Clyda, he does not think they'll be ready for Saturday. 2-2 pitch. Hit second base side. Harris slides in front of it, scoops it up, fires over to Bosselman to retire Leasty and the Archers. Archers go quickly in the first. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, and no Archers left on base after... A half inning of play here at Groove Field at Tenor High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Archers nothing. And the Rams coming to bat. Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things. Clubhouse Pizza in A has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street in Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. 
back at Groove Field. Reed Leachty will be on the mound for the Archers. Eli Reinhardt behind the plate. Ethan Leachty at first. Dylan Hines at second. Carson Altimus at short. Third baseman's Cam Fuller. Outfield, Aiden Leachty in left. Parker Moore in center. And Hampton Rogi in right field. DH is Tegan Marlin. Tegan is hitting for Rogi. For the Rams, Aiden Mosier will lead off, followed by Caden Radzik. Dalton Wolfram hitting third. Fourth is Taryn Ward. Batting fifth, Alex Shoblin DHing for Connor Wolfram, who is in right field. Batting sixth is Luke Harris at second. Seventh is Hunter Balsamon at first. Batting eighth, Eli Plasman. Eli, as you heard, the first inning was on the mound for the Rams and batting ninth. The human highlight film out there in center is Grady Gusweiler. <laughs> Archers went one, two, three in the first inning. Aiden Mosier is going to step in for the Rams. Mosier, 306, has 11 steals through, four, or through 13 games for the Rams, heading into 14. Game 14 here. He's walked 13 times on the season. Mosier steps in. Left side of the batter's box. Reed Leachty also a lefty. First pitch just a bit inside. Ball one. <laughs> Reads 1 0 pitch outside corner. Strike called. Count Evans at 1 and 1. The ball went back to Leachty on the mound and he dropped it and he was shaking his glove like he had. At first, I thought he had like a bee or something in his glove. He must have had a rock or something in there. 1 1 pitch coming to Mosier. Swung on, hit third base side. Nice backhand stop by. The third base when he throws it into the dirt. At first, however, Ethan Leachty could not scoop it up. Cam Fuller backhanded it right in, by the bag. Gonna be an error on the third baseman. Eve's five. So Mosier will be on at first base. Always a threat to steal is Aiden, as we said. Aiden leads the Rams with 11 stolen bases. As a team, the Rams have 36 steals through 13 games. Caden Radzik steps in, 409 for Caden, leads the Rams with 17 RBIs. Throw over to first base, Mosier back safely. At least he comes to the plate, strike called. At least tonight, John doesn't have to worry about a delayed response. Actually, this umpire I think gives two strike calls if I'm seeing things right. <laughs> he gives an initial call, then he follows it up with, uh, hey, just to make sure. Throw over to first base. Mosier back safely. Reed Leachy with the sign comes to the plate. Ball called. Count evens one ball, one strike. Just underway here on this Thursday afternoon at Tenora High School's Groove Field. No score as the Rams bat here in the bottom of the first inning. 1 1 pitch to Radzik is low. Nice stop by the catcher, Eli Reinhardt. Well, the first thing that we noticed, and Bridget said it right away, was, hey, we don't see BR bundled up like it's going to snow. No stocking cap, no winter jacket. <laughs> Coach Rennell had coaching at third, and Coach Tipton at first. Pitch to Caden, just a bit low. Three balls and one strike. I like it. I love it. I love it. She didn't hit it. She was like she was a little kid. Leach D's 3-1 to the Rams shortstop, Caden Radzik, strike called. That's what I was going to say, they do have training now, right? It hurt my, it hurt my uh, granddaughter. Leach D comes set. There goes Mosier, pitch is low, ball four. Mosier down to second, that was ball four, so Radzik heads down to first base. Rams' first two batters have reached against Reed Leachty. When you see Reed on the mound and you see some of the stats he put up as a running back for Antwerp, you kind of picture him as a little bigger kid, but he's just a little fellow out there. But he's very quick. Elusive, to say the least. 
Gonna bring up Dalton Wolfram. Dalton, the hottest, one of the hottest hitter in the area, and definitely the hottest hitter on the Rams. 422 for Dalton, has 14 RBIs, has eight of those in his last two games. First pitch is a ball. He has two runners on base right now. First and second. Ball two to Dalton. Dalton back-to-back -back player of the games. Monday and Tuesday, Monday versus Antwerp and Tuesday versus Ayersville. At least he with the sign, 2-0 coming to Wolfram outside corner. Strike called, two balls and one strike to Dalton. Dalton behind the plate. 2-1 pitch to Dalton, fouls it off first base side. Count evens at two and two. Taryn Ward on deck for the Rams. Radzik at first, Mosier big lead down there at second. 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on and missed. Dalton in frustration, kind of lets the bat go. First out, big out for Reed Leachty. Taryn Ward's gonna step in for the Rams. Ward, 359, has 10 runs batted in. First pitch, strike called. Did you heard that in the background. You're gonna hear the yump a lot tonight. <laughs> I agree with John, he says it's about time. We struggled the last couple days. Leachty turns, does not fire to second base. Mosier scampers back safely. Mosier let off with a error on the third baseman, reached on an error, and then Radzik fouled up with a walk. Pitch to Ward as a ball. One ball and one strike to Taryn Ward. Alex Shoblin on deck for the Rams. The lefty Leachty with the sign comes to the plate. Swung on him right back off his glove. He hops behind the mound, fields it, throws over to Ethan Leachty for the out, but that was an absolute rocket right back at him. Hit the heel of his glove, fell behind him, maintained his composure, went back, picked it up, fired over to Ethan for out number two. Runners advanced on the play. Mosier went to third, and Radzik down to second. Shoblin steps in. Ellick, 378, two home runs and 12 runs batted in. Pitch to him is high and away, ball one. Last Thursday, Alec had two solo home runs versus Hicksville. one -oh pitch is just a bit outside. Two balls and no strikes. Luke Harris awaits on deck for the Rams. two -oh pitch to Shoblin. Strike called. Two and one, two outs. No score, bottom of the first inning. Rams are threatening, have runners at second and third. Reed winds it up, his two one, strike two called. Be a hitter, fella. Two two pitch coming to Shoblin from Leasty. Outside ball three. There it was, yeah. Payoff pitch coming to Shoblin. Outside ball four. It's going to load him up. It was a intentional, unintentional walk there, I think, to Shoblin. Going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris having a nice season. 372 with nine runs batted in. Luke's no, sh no <laughs> he's no slacker at the plate. Reed winds it up. First pitch. Strike call. Shoblin at first, Radzik at second, Mosier at third, two outs. Harris at the plate, pitch to Luke, bit outside. One ball, one strike. Umpire gives the outside call like he's brushing dust or something away. He's just like tap, tap, tap. <laughs> one and one coming to Harris. Swung on and missed. Luke swings through it. Read ahead of Harris. One ball and two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Leachty winds it up, pitch to Harris. 
little blooper back to the mound, leashed the underneath it, puts it away to retire Harris and the Rams. Harris just trying to guard the outside of the plate, the little blooper right back to Leach D. One on the assisted for the third out. The Rams threaten here in the first, do not score. No runs for the Rams, no hits. One air for the Archers and the Rams leave them loaded. Three on base after one here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. We are scoreless on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Back to Tenora High School we go. Four, five, and six for the Archers. Ethan Leachty, Eli Reinhardt, and Dylan Hines to face Eli Plasman. Plasman set down the Archers in order. One, two, three in the top of the first inning. Bottom of half of the inning, the Rams loaded them up with two outs and could not score. We said during our signs excavating pregame, these two teams met two times last season. The first time was a GMC game over at... Antwerp and the Archers came away with a 9-8 win. Rams fell behind early. Again, their defense wasn't their best friend last year over at the Archers. They rallied, got within one, could not score. Last year, Luke Krause started, and I think Luke only pitched the first three innings. And then in the final se final regular season game here, which was the Rams senior day, it's a non-league contest. Rams with a 10-2 win. First pitch to Ethan Leach D. Strike called. Plasman on the mound, one and one, ERA of 1.80. Last time we saw Eli was Tuesday versus Napoleon. Swung on, hit third base side. Ward scoops it up, throws across in time to retire Ethan Leach D. 5-3 on the put out. It was a chilly, rainy day. The temperature probably dropped 15 degrees on the start of the game to the end of the game. But Eli pitched seven innings, allowed nine hits, six runs, four earned runs, walked one, struck out one, and Eli Reinhardt steps in. First pitch to him was a ball, but Eli's defense took a vacation, I believe, in the third inning where the Rams allowed five runs. They kind of fell asleep at the wheel that inning. 1-0 pitch, hit down the right field line. Bosselman giving chase in foul territory. Has it just hit the tip of his glove. Nice hustle down there by Hunter Bosselman. Just needed about another six inches on the end of his glove. Bosselman, Harris, and Connor Wolfram all converging down there. Hunter had the best chance. Everybody's back to their positions. Plasma to make sure they're set. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Eli Reinhardt. Strike two on the outside corner. Dylan Hines on deck for the Archers. 1-2 pitch. Hit second base side. Little soft liner. Harris scoops it up right before it hits the shoe tops. Out number two. Archers went to the 2019 state championship game. That was the same year that the Archers girls softball team won state in 2019, and the Archers played for the state title in baseball. Strike call, nice breaking ball by Eli Plasman, and an even better strike call by the umpire. Plasman winds it up, his 0-1. Hit foul, first base side. Plasman quickly ahead of Dylan Hines. No balls and two strikes. No score here, top of inning number two. Beautiful day for baseball. Could be just a little bit warmer, but trust me, after our last three or four games, nobody here is complaining about the weather. 
Plasmans 0-2. Foul tipped into the glove. Wolfram hangs on. Hines is out on the strikeout. Plasman has set him down in order. Six straight retired by Eli in the inning for the Archers. No runs, no hits, nobody left. There are no errors by the Rams and no Archers left on base. After an inning and a half here at Group Field, it is the Archers of Antwerp nothing and the Tenora Rams nothing here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, ring up Brad. 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Boosters, say go Rams. Back to Groove Field, we are scoreless as we hit the bottom of inning number two. Rams, as we said, threatened in that first inning, left them loaded. On send seven, eight, and nine, Bosselman, Plasman, and Gus Weiler to face Ethan Leachty. No score next door. Lady Rams and the Lady Archers playing. Rams need to win and hope for a Fairview Apache loss to have a share of the GMC title this year. First pitch to Bosselman is called a strike. Bosselman, 211, has 10 RBIs on the season. Pitch is outside. Count evens, one ball and one strike. Start something here. Start it. Outside corner, strike two. One ball and two strikes. Two Rams first baseman, Hunter Wasselman. One, two pitches low. Count evens, two balls and two strikes as Eli Reinhardt throws the ball into center field. Carson Ultimus goes back there. Retrieves it, gives it back to a starting pitcher, Reed Leachty. Leachty's 2-2 two, to two, Bosselman, swung on and fouled right back. Bosselman at the plate, Plasman on deck. Gus Weiler to follow for the Rams. 2-2 pitch to Hunter is outside, full count. Hey, come on here. Get her started, fella. The lefty Leachy's pitch is a bit. I'm not sure if that was low or where it was, but Hunter Bosselman works a leadoff walk. Bring up Eli Plasma. Eli, 444 in limited plate appearances this season. However, he has collected, I believe, four runs batted in in the last week. First pitch is a ball to Eli. Eli's got five runs batted in, actually, as four hits and nine plate appearances this season for his 444 average. 2 0 now to. Rams pitcher, Eli Plasman. Strike called. Two balls and one strike. Actually trying to find, if I can't find the Edgerton score on Game Changer, so I can kind of keep track of that. 2-1 pitch. Plasma squares around the bunt, bunts it in the air, first base side, just short of the Archer's dugout. No score here as we bat in the bottom of the second inning. 
Hunter Musselman with a leadoff walk. 2-2 two -two count to Eli Plasman. Leach D steps off. She's back set. 2-2 two -two pitch to the plate. That's high. Count goes full. Three balls and no strikes. Or three balls and two strikes to Eli Plasman. Payoff pitch. There goes the runner. Ground ball. Short stop side. Ultima's up with it. Long throw across. Dug out there by Ethan Leach D. Going down to second base is Hunter Bossom. That's the first out. 6 3 on the put out. Going to bring up for Tenora, number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Grady on the season, 310 with six runs batted in. Base hit, Grady. Find the hole here, fella. Grady has three stolen bases. Runner of second now. Reed Leach D winds it up. First pitch is a ball. There we go. 1-0 is called a strike. My great, now you're ready. Now you're ready, buddy. It's something hard, fella. You didn't drive it. One ball, one strike, one out here. Bosselman leads at second. Scampers back as Leachty steps off. Get set, get ready. See you drive it, Grady. Outside corner, strike two called. One ball, two strikes to Grady. Anywhere here. Long look in by the lefty Reed Leachy gets the sign come set. One, two to the plate. Little blooper and foul territory by Gus Weiler. Cam Fuller, the third baseman, gives chase just out of his reach. So Grady trots back, grabs the bat. Gonna step in with a one, two count. Same idea. Check swing. Count evens two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch inside. Count goes full. That no way. There, get it, buddy. Was there, get it. Reed Leach, he gets the sign. 3 2 to Grady is low. Ball four. Gus Weiler with his second walk this inning. Runners at first and second for the Rams. Bosselman at second. Gus Weiler at first. Both reached via the walk. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Mosier reached on an air by the third baseman his first time. At the plate. Scores around the bunt, brings the bat back. That's a ball. <laughs> 1 0 pitch to Aiden is up and in. Two balls and no strikes. No score here in the bottom of the second. One out, Mosier digs in from the left side. Reed Leach, he comes set. The lefties pitches inside, ball three. Caden Radzik on deck for the Rams. Rio. Ball four, high, so Mosier goes down to first base to load him up. That's three straight, or three walks to load up the bases. Caden Radzik is gonna step in. Radzik also reached on the walk in the first inning. Gonna have a timeout. Pitching coach is gonna go out and talk to his starter, Reed Leachty. No score, but the Rams are threatening. The base is loaded and one out. And the base is loaded in the first inning and did not score. Right. 
Is looking. I don't think Fairview Fairview softball must not be on Game Changer. Neither is Edgerton, so we won't have a score until after the game. Pitch to Radzik is a ball. Least he's kind of by his expression there thinks he's getting a little bit squeezed on the strike zone. 1-0 pitch, outside corner. Strike called. One ball, one strike, one out. Bases full of Rams. No score as they bat here in the bottom of inning number two. Lefty Leasty's pitch. That's low. Nice stop by Eli Reinhardt there. Two balls and a strike. Dalton Wolfram is on deck. Two one pitch from Leachty. Hammered into center field. That's going to drop in front of Parker Moore. Scoring is Taryn Ward. That's going to be an RBI single for Caden Radzik, his 18th run batted in. Dalton Wolfram. Or Hunter Bosselin scored. Yes, I thought they said Taryn Ward. That was Hunter. Got the same sort of helmet. Come on, Don. Come on, D. Same thing here. Brady goes down to third, Mosier at second, and Radzik at first. First pitch to Dalton is a ball. It's something hard now. Dalton and struck out in his first at bat in the first inning. Fouls this one off, first base side. One ball and one strike. That was the as John, yes. Our statistician up here, John, says that's the first hit of the ball game here in the bottom of the set. We have runners all over the place for Tenora. That one's inside, similar to Tuesday. I think the Rams had five runs on the board and they got their first hit in the third inning against Ayersville. 2-1 to Dalton, fouls it off first base side. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. Rams have finally broken through. Single run here, still have the bases loaded with one out. Dalton Wolfram. At the plate, leach these 2-2. Jack swing, they said he went. Strike three. Oh, they appeal. And the second second base umpire says no. The home plate umpire, I think originally said he swung, asked for the appeal, and the field umpire said no. So a payoff pitch, 3-2 pitch to Dalton. Hits a second base side on the line. They're going to double off Radzik. Double play, Wolfram lined it right at Dylan Hines at second. He scooped it up, Radzik was on his way to second. And that ends the inning for the Rams, but the Rams finally do get a run on one hit. No errors and just one left for the Rams. So after two innings of play here at Groove Field at Snore High School, see Snore Rams one and the Antwerp Archers nothing on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on tenorarams.com. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Top of the third we go. 7-8-9 for the Archers. Aiden Leachty taking Marlin and Cam Fuller, your three to bat against Rams senior starter Eli Plasman. Plasman set down six Archers in a row to start the contest. Rams have had the bases loaded on two separate occasions, have mustered just one run out of the mess. Aiden Leachty steps in, bats from the right side of the plate, or the left side. He's a third lefty to bat. And the first seven batters for the Archers. Pitch heads to the backstop through the legs of Wolfram. Good job, somebody. 
Plasman winds it up, 1-0 pitch to Aiden. That one's outside, two balls and no strikes. Aiden looks like his older brother, Austin. Maybe just a little bit smaller, but. <laughs> Plasman's 2-0 to Aiden. Swung on, hit straight away center field. Grady Gusweiler camps underneath it. A high fly ball, puts it away for out number one. Thing stayed up there forever for Grady. Now batting number 14, Tegan Marlin. Tegan Marlin steps in. It's hitting for Hampton Rogie. Rogie's playing in right field for the Archers. Plasman's first pitch, swung on, hit over the head of the shortstop, Radzik. He goes to the outfield grass. Mosher comes in, calls him off, and puts it away for out number two. Gradually, the Rams are learning that the outfielder has the better play on that ball. We've seen many times that either Luke Harris or Eli Plasman on the right side of the infield go out into shallow right field, and they try to make a play where the right fielder is standing right there and can make the play, and the ball somehow drops. First pitch to Cam Fuller as a strike. Fuller, the number nine hitter, is playing at third base for the Archers. Plasman's 0-1. That one's drilled foul down the left field side. Left field side. Plasman ahead, no balls and two strikes to Cam Fuller. Eli's 0-2 pitch coming. Outside, ball one. Plasman's 1-2. Breaking ball. Hit. Left field. Back goes Mosier. That's over his head and over the fence. Cam Fuller with a solo home run. That ball kept going and going and going. And it wound up going over the left field fence. We are tied at one. Mosher was playing sort of deep. He turned and kept going back and finally just looks up and thing sailed over the left field fence. Top of the lineup, Parker Moore. Moore bounced back to Plasman in the first inning. That was a first hit for the Archers. Plasman gets the sign from his battery mate, Dalton Wolfram, winds it up. Pitch swung on and foul tipped into the glove. Off the bat of Parker Moore. Strike one. Eli's 0-1 to Parker Moore, ground ball. To Karen Ward at third, scoops it up, throws across to Hunter Bosselman, and in time to get Parker Moore. 5 3 on the put out. In the inning for the Archers, they get on board with one run, one hit. That was the Cam Fuller solo home run. No Ram errors and no Archers left on base. Headed to the bottom of the third inning here at Groove Field. We are tied at one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back at Groove Field, we have a new ball game. We are tied at 1 as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Ward, Shoblin, and Harris will be at bat against Reed Leachty and the Archers. We'll set the Archers defense while we have a quick second. Leachty on the mound, Eli Reinhardt behind the plate. Ethan Leachty at first, Ryan Hines 
is at second. Carson Altimus is at short. Cam Fuller at third. Aiden Leach, D in left. Parker Moore in center. And Hampton Rogi in right field. Deacon Marlin is hitting for Rogi as a DH. Taryn Ward grounded back to Leach. He actually, more than that, he lined it back to Reed in the first inning. First pitch is a called strike. Karen came in with a 359 average and 10 runs batted in. Pitch is outside. One ball and one strike. That's hit to third. Nice scoop up over there by Cam Fuller. Ward hit it hard, just hit it right at Cam Fuller. 5-3 on the putout for round number one. No zones in the up Alex Shoblin. First pick, pitch to Alec. There's a strike. Shoblin walked in the first inning. Reed Leachty gets the sign. The lefty's pitch is low. Count evens, one ball, one strike. One out here in the bottom of the third inning. We're tied at one. Nobody on for the Rams. Leach these pitch outside corner. Strike called. Chaplin, two home runs and 12 runs batted in on the season. Luke Harris awaits on deck. Another ground ball to third. Cam Fuller throws it over to Ethan Leachty for round number two. Back-to-back 5-3 -back putouts for the Archers. Luke Harris steps in, hit a little soft liner. Back to Reed Leachty with the bases loaded in the first. Harris kind of guarding the plate just through the bat at the ball. A little pop-up. Back to Leachty. Which ended the Rams' first inning. Strike called to Luke Harris. Reed Leach D's 0-1 to Luke. Swung on, fouled right back at us. Two balls, or no balls and two strikes. Harris bats from the right side. 0-2 from Leach D. Outside gets behind Eli Reinhardt. Goes back, grabs it. No, actually, Hunter Bosselman goes back and grabs it. The umpire just gave Reinhardt a new ball. One, two, pitch coming. That's low. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. Two outs, nobody on. That's the Rams bat here in the third. Solo home run. Why Cam Fuller tied the game last inning. Pitches high and away, ball three. Count goes full to Luke Harris. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Rams for the first time today go down in order. No runs, no hits, no Archer errors, and no Rams left on base. To the top of the fourth we go. They're tied at one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on tenorarams.com. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Top of the fourth inning here at Groove Field. 
For the Archers, their number two, three, and four hitters, Carson Ultimus, Reed Leachty, and then Ethan Leachty to face Eli Plasman. Both pitchers have allowed one run on one hit. The only error in the game was committed by the Archers. That was in the first inning. Plasman winds it up. First pitch to Carson Ultimus. He swings and fouls it out of play. Third base side. Carson 0 for 1. Little pop foul into, or pop fly into foul territory. Her boss a nice play to retire him at his first at bat. Second pitch is a ball. One ball and one strike to the shortstop Carson Ultimus. Pitch one on foul back. One ball and two strike. Senior to be Carson. Definitely the favorite for player of the year in the GMC for football and probably player of the year in the area, I would imagine. One, two. Archers just graduated one senior from their football team last year, and that was, I believe, Kendrick Robinson. So, or Parker Moore, yes, you're right, Bridget, Parker Moore. Tap foul, third base side. Count stays two balls and two strikes. So basically the Archers have, and Coach Hale have the entire team coming back, which made it what, to the final four, I believe. Unfortunately for Carson, he sprained his ankle severely at Liberty Center and was not the same the week after in their playoff game. 2-2 pitch, fouled off again, third base side. But that Friday or Saturday night, whichever night it was, regardless, it was uh, very cold and blustery and snowy. Plasman steps off. Ultima steps out. Plasman's ready to go. Ultima steps back in. Plasman's 2-2 two -two to Carson Ultimus. Just a bit up and in. Off-speed pitch stayed a little bit high and away. Count goes full to Carson Ultimus. Plasma gets the ball, he's ready to go. Ground ball, first base side foul. Fossilman over there, fields it. I know what you mean. <laughs> Infield turf here at Sonora High School. Outfield is grass for those of you watching at home. Three, two, pitch. Swung on and missed. Ultimus goes down swinging for the first out here in the fourth. May have been ball four. To bring up a Reed Leach D. Second strikeout for Plasman. Leach D 0 for 1, grounded to Pla or granted to Harris his first plate appearance. Swung and missed. Strike one. Eli's 0-1 to Reed Leachty. Oh, shallow fly ball. Radzik out. Gusweiler in. Harris out. And Bermuda Triangle out there. Luke Harris puts it away in shallow center field for out number two to retire Reed Leachty. Now batting number 32, Ethan Leachty. Ethan steps in. First baseman is 0 for 1. Grounded to Taryn Ward in the second inning. Foul ball, first base side. Wolfram goes over, but it's out of play. Tight of one here in the top of the fourth. Just two hits, one for each team. Plasman, long look in, gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. Is 0-1, is low. Ball one, one ball and one strike. <laughs> one, one pitch, swung on and missed. Took a little bit off there. Two years ago, 
game was here. I think Antwerp was number one in the state, I believe. One, two pitch outside, ball two. Jaden Bergman hit a liner in the left center gap to win the game in the bottom of the seventh inning for the Rams. That was, a, that was one of the better games in the area that season. Two, two pitch to Ethan. Fly ball to Mosier over there in a left field. Go, couple steps back, he puts it away to retire Ethan for out number three here in the fourth. In the inning for the Archers, no runs, no hit, no Ram errors, and nobody left on base. Headed to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. We are tied at one on the drop zone Pete Surya scoreboard. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. If you haven't done so, I highly suggest you, you go out to the Firestone Tavern on a Friday or Saturday night, and hopefully it's nice enough where you can sit out there on that patio balcony they have out there by the golf course. That is a fantastic view. Best burgers in the area. Two years ago, they had the best pizza. Now, Drop Zone had the best pizza three years ago. Firestone had it last year. And then Drop Zone, Harold's like, Aaron, you're not going to outdo me. So Harold got it back this year. So Drop Zone has pizza, best pizza in the area two of the last three years. And then Chef Aaron at Firestone stole it from him two years ago. First pitch to Bossom one's right back at us. But Chef Aaron said, if you're, I can't get you in best pizza, I'll get you in best burgers. Well, he winds it up. His pitch to Hunter Bosselman is a ball. One ball and one strike. Bosselman walked and scored the only Rams run in the second inning. 1-1 one, one pitch, a bit outside. Two balls and one strike to Hunter. Lady Rams up 2-0 in the fifth inning next door. Swung on and missed. Count to Bosselman. There's two balls and two strikes. See it hit it here. See it hit it. Eli Plasman on deck. 2 2 pitch. Stays a bit low. Count goes full. After two rough innings, Reed Leachty regained his control last inning. Swung on and missed. Down goes Bosselman for the first out. Rams had the bases loaded two separate occasions in innings one and two. Came away with just one run both times. Going to bring up Eli Plasman. Eli grounded to Carson Ultimus' short in the second inning. Eli come in with a 444 average. First pitch is low. Gets behind the catcher. Eli Reinhardt scoops it up. Fires back to his pitcher, Reed Leachty. Pitches a strike. Reed listed as 5'10", 165. Something here too. One, one pitch coming. Pitches low to Eli Plasman. Two balls and one strike. Must have got the heights from Coach Billman. <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> for Archer fans. <laughs> Two one pitch outside, three and one to Eli. We know those basketball coaches. <laughs> Two one pitch. 
Oh. 3-1 inside. Plasman was ready to head to first base. Actually took a step towards first base. Umpire said, don't go anywhere. That's strike two. Full count pitch. Yeah. Oh. Strike three called. Plasman stood there for a second. Is going to reach as the ball got behind Eli Reinhardt. So strikeout goes to Reed Leachty. Plasman gets the first on the, well, I'm going to call the pass ball. It wasn't, didn't look like it was in the dirt. It looks like it just went through the catcher's mid of Eli Reinhardt. So Rams have a runner at first on the strikeout. Brady Gusweiler steps up. Gusweiler walked in the second inning, got as far as third base. Strike called to Grady. Come on, fella. We are tied at one here in the bottom of the fourth. Drive one, Grady. Winner of this game takes second place in the GMC behind Wayne Trace. Throw over to first base. Plasman back safely when he. Have a first baseman list is a 6-4 over there. You don't really got to have your throw pinpoint by any means. Pitch to Grady stays inside. Two balls and one strike. Ethan leached the big target. Ethan came in to save the game last year in Antwerp. 2-1 pitch inside. Off the catcher's glove. It goes again to the backstop. Plasman goes down to second on the wild pitch slash pass ball. I don't know if that hit in front of Eli Reinhardt or just hit off his glove again. Gotta like it here now. Come on. When the video gets uploaded tomorrow in HD, we'll check her out. 3-1 pitch, stays inside. Grady trots down the first base. Second walk for Grady. The Rams in this 1-1 game have runners at first and second with one out. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Mosier reached on an error by the third baseman in the first inning and walked in the second. 306 for Aiden, 15 stolen bases, and Aiden has walked 13 times. Squares around the bunt, brings the ball back, or brings the bat back as the ball approaches the plate. Ball one. See one drive, Mo. Lefty on lefty, Reed Leachty on the mound for the archers. Pitch is almost right in the middle of the white rubber there. That way. Pitch stays inside. <laughs> Again, Leachy looks in there. <laughs> kind of gives you that two second stare. It's like, where was that one at? 2 0 pitch to Mosier. A little bit high, ball three. <laughs> He's going to take a stroll behind the mound. I can't blame him. Mosier steps back in from the left side. 3 0 pitch with the bases loaded. Strike called. Or no, two on with the, my apologies, two on with a 3-0 count. That was called a strike. Three balls and one strike to Mosier. Runners at first and second lead away. That one just misses him. Mosier spins out of the way for ball four. So Aiden heads down to first base, and that's going to load him up. Plasman goes down to third. Gus Weiler to second, Mosier at first. Bases loaded for Caden Radzik. Third time the Rams have had the bases loaded here today. And the Rams have just one run. Tied to one here in the bottom of the fourth. Each team with just a hit. Wind blowing from right to left here at Sonora High School. Timeout. Head coach Zach Feesby going to head out. And talk to Ethan Leachty. Coach Feesby in his eighth year coaching, I believe, at Antwerp. Ninth season, actually. Ninth season for Zach. He has 81 wins overall in his career in Antwerp. And then now I got a split second. I can give you those. Like, last four years for Antwerp sports. 27 and 5 in football, 94 and 10 in basketball, and in baseball are 61 and 26. So you talk about a really good four or five years of, of classes. That right there defines greatness. Bases full Rams, Radzik to the plate. Strike called. And Pittsburgh Zoo, we all say hi to you because we know you're watching. Radzik. 
Takes a pitch outside, count evens, one ball and one strike. Caden walked in the first, singled in the second. 1-1 one, one pitch to Radzik, strike two called. Dalton Wolfram on deck. Reed Lisi gets the side and he's ready to go. Radzik asks for time, steps out. Leasty, he's ready to go, he's right back on top. Gets, says, yes, I got her. One, two coming to Radzik, low, nice stop by Reinhardt. Saved a run there. Infield in at the corners. 2-2 two, two pitch to Radzik. Swung on, ground ball, shortstop side. Ultimus to second for one. Relay not in time. There we go. Plasman scores to break the tie. Rams on top, two to one. Razik with the RBI on the fielder's choice. 6-4-3. Gus Weiler went down to third and Mosier was erased at second. So Radzik is on at first. See, two outs here, see if Rams try to steal a run here. There goes Radzik, throw good. Back to the pitcher, Reed Leachty. So Radzik in with a stolen base. One ball, no strikes to Dalton. Pitch, away. high and away, ball two. Six stolen base for Caden on the season. Drive it, Dalton. Drive it, fella. 2-0 coming to Wolfram. Swung on, fouled off first base side. Out of play. Two balls and one strike. Rams have broken the tie here with the run. They lead two to one in the bottom of the fourth. They have runners at second and third with two outs. Reed Leachty winds it up. The lefty's pitch to the backstop it goes. Here comes Grady. Here comes the throw, not in time. Grady stands up, scores. So Gus Weiler scores on the wild pitch. Rams lead three to one. Down to third goes Radzik. This whole inning started, Eli Plasman was actually struck out and reached on a pass ball. 3-1 to Dalton is high. He trots down the first base with the walk. To bring up Taryn Ward. Ward 0 for 2, came in batting 359 on the season. That's going to be it. Coach Feesby goes out. He's going to take the ball from Reed Leachty, and we'll have the changes when we come right back after this. 3-1 Rams lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning with the upcoming pitching change here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes. Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Back here at Sonora High School, they say three to one lead for the Rams. Going in relief is Parker Moore. Parker Moore comes in from center field to the mound, Reed Leachty heads to center field for the Archers. Another lefty for Coach Feesby. So the Rams with two under runs here in the fourth. Broke a 1-1 tie. Aaron Ward will be at the plate. 
We said Tieran's over two. 359 coming in and on the base pass for the Rams. Dalton Wolfram and Caden Radzik. Wolfram's at third, or yeah, Wolfram's at third, Radzik's at second. Lefty Parker Moore going to pitch from the third base side of the mound. Gets the sign. First pitch coming to Taryn Ward. There goes Wolfram down to second. Throw goes to third. Trying to catch Radzik napping, but with Rams head coach Brent Renolette there, you know that's not going to happen. So Wolfram with the stolen base goes down to second. Rams have runners at second and third with two outs. One ball, no strike. Pitch to Ward is called a strike. Strike two. Or strike one to Taryn Ward. Pitches outside. Nice stop by Reinhardt. <coughs> two balls and one strike. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Parker Moore winds it up. His 2-1 pitch to Terran. Run it, run it. Taps it third base side. Nice play over there by third baseman Cam Fuller. Throws over to first base to get Terran Ward. Fuller snagged it. Kind of slid on his knee, spun around, fired over to first base to get Taryn Ward for the final out in the inning. Fantastic play there by Cam Fuller at third for the Archers. 5-3 on the put out for the Rams in the inning. They break the tie. They get two runs without the benefit of a hit, I do believe. A couple wild pitches in the inning, and the Rams leave 2-1 base. After four innings of play here at Group Field, Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard shows the Rams three and the Amber Parchers one. We'll be back after this from our fantastic sponsors. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments with safe money strategies offered to you by PI and I. You can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call, and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD-style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed, with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Back to the action on Sonora Rams Sports Live. Heading to the top of the fifth inning here at Groove Field. Rams. Up to the plate, number five. It's a two spot in the fourth inning. Have grabbed a 3-1 lead over the Archers. Five, six, and seven. Reinhardt, Hines, and Aiden Leachy to face Eli Posman. First pitch stays outside. Ball one. Swung on, hit to center field. Gus Weiler cruises over a little bit to left center field, puts it away, so Grady retires Eli Reinhardt for out number one. Up to the plate, number one, Derek Hines. Derek Hines is gonna step in. He is 0 for 1 and struck out. In the second inning, Klasman winds it up. Righty's first pitch. Yeah. Little blooper, first base side. Bosselman back there, puts it away just inside the line in fair territory for out number two. Kind of stumbled on that lip out there where the turf meets the grass. Up to the plate, number two, Aiden. But Hunter put it away. Aiden steps in. 
Aiden 0 for 1 flew out to Grady in center. First plate appearance. That's when he drills just outside the bag at first. Bosselman snags it. <laughs> Plasman's 0-1, swung on. High fly ball on the infield to Radzik, scoots a couple steps on the outfield grass and he puts it away. Just like that. Archers go quickly in the fifth, no runs, no hits, no ram airs, no archers left on base. After four and a half innings of play here at Groove Field at Sonora High School, Sonora Rams three and the Antwerp Archers, they just have one. We'll be back after this time out. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Headed to the bottom of inning number five here at Sonora High School. Parker Moore came on in relief last inning of starter Reed Leachty. Shoblin, Harris, and Bosselman, the three to face Parker Moore. Back-to-back -back lefties for Coach Feesby and his archers. 2-0 still next door to softball diamond. Shoblin steps in. Alec walked in the first, grounded out to Cam Fuller at third in the third. So as we said during our science excavating pregame, the seniors that graduated last year were the last of the 2019 state championship players. Or some a runner-up. They went to the championship game with. They were state runner-up. First pitch of Shalvin was a strike. Strike two. That was Luke Krause, Hunter Sproles, and Chase Clark were members of that team last year. Parker Moore shakes off the sign, shakes it off again. It's the sign from Reinhardt this time. 0-2 is outside. One ball and two strikes. One run, one hit, one air for the Archers. Three runs and one hit, airless ball for the Rams here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Parker Moore winds it up, pitches outside. Two balls and two strikes. 62 degrees at game time on your David Frank weather forecast. Luke Harris awaits on deck. Nobody's playing ball tomorrow in the area, I'm assuming. Swung on and missed. Down goes Shoblin. First out here in the fifth inning, Luke Harris, so for two, steps in. He's going to plan on mowing my grass tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. Supposed to rain starting tonight all the way through tomorrow night. Heavy rain. Strike call to Luke Harris, depending on what local meteorologist you listen to. Good pitch. 0-1 pitch, strike two. Harris quickly down, no balls and two strikes. Parker Moore, like Reed Leachy, gets the ball back. He's ready to go. 0-2 pitch to Harris, outside. One ball and one strike. Moore's 1-2, tap to the plate. Foul ball. Oh, they're going to say that it was not a foul ball. They're going to say it was a fair ball. So Harris, Luke, Luke thought it was a foul ball. Here comes BR from third base. The umpire said, hey, that was a fair ball. 
was in front of the plate. So Reinhardt picked up the ball, touched Harris with it, and the umpire said that's two unassisted. Come on. BR. <laughs> BR not happy with the call. Takes takes off back to third base. Talking to the ground, aimed at the umpire. <laughs> going to bring up for the Rams Hunter Bosselman pitches high and away so that, that goes 2-1 assisted and that's the second out Luke made no attempt to run whatsoever he knew it was a assumed it was a foul ball Bosselman skies at first base side Ethan Leachty was in foul territory the slight wind brought it back Leachty put the glove up and he just missed the ball so Bosselman's going to be on at first base. We air on the first baseman. Going to bring up Riley Peters. So Peters is pinch hitting for Eli Plasman. Parker Moore's first pitch is low. Ball one. Rams with a 3-1 lead here in the bottom of the fifth. When you like and drive it here. Peters, the pinch hitter. 0-1 pitch, swung on, hit third base side foul for the season. Peters hitting 300. Yeah. Yeah. Has three hits and 10 at bats and has five runs batted in. Riley's walked twice. And has a steal a stolen base. Parker Moore's 1-1 to Peters, swung on and missed. Strike two. Down to second base goes Hunter Bosselman. Not sure that anybody knows what just happened. I think Peters might have thought he fouled it off his foot, and so did Hunter, and Hunter just trotted down to second. One, two, pitch, strike three called. So Peters, pinch hitting for Plasman, goes down looking for the third out here in the fifth. What a confusing inning for the Rams. No runs. They get no hits. One archer air, and Tenora leaves one on base. Top of the six, we go. Here on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Rams with a three to one lead. We'll be back after this time out. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polished Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polished Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Back here, top of inning number six, we go. Eli Plasman still on the mound for the Rams. He's allowed one run on one hit. Fantastic performance thus far by Plasman through the first five innings. Knock on wood for us up here. Lady Rams with a 2 nothing shutout win over the Archers next door to us. Coach Fairchild, I think he said he's off. Nobody's playing tomorrow. Well, there wasn't a schedule regardless, and I don't think they'll be playing anyways because of the rain. And Saturday is prom here at Tenora. Well, the boys travel to Kaleida for an 11 o'clock game over at Holy Name Field at Kaleida. Weather permitting, of course. But the good thing about that is his first pitch to Tegan Marlin, uh, Tegan Marlin is a ball. Eight, nine, and one here for the Archers. Plasman's pitch fouled third base side. Coach Feesby with a backhanded snag there down at third base. But they have turf over at Clyda, similar to what they have here at Sonora. So even if it does rain, as long as it's not raining, they should be able to play the game. Pitches. 
two balls and one strike. Yes, as Bridge is, as Bridge is saying. <laughs> oh, a quick story here. 2 1 coming up. Swung on, hit foul left side. For years, for whatever reason, the Rams always played a Saturday game when prom was on Friday night. And I don't know that the Rams ever won a Saturday game here after prom. <laughs> it was just brutally awful. <laughs> <laughs> two balls and two strikes coming. Pitch from Plasman to Marlin is a ball. Cow goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Nobody on. Nobody out here in the top of the six. Rams lead 3-1. Bay off pitch. Just a bit outside and low. Tegan Marlin, Tegan Marlin works a leadoff walk. But there was, I think, the last time that the Rams played at prom may have been two years ago when they played out of a Glandorf here, and that game lasted about 58 minutes. <laughs> that, was, that was it, it was done and over. Pitch is outside, nice stop by Dalton Wolfram, and I think that's the last game that the Rams played after prom. Here we go, three. 1-0 pitch coming. Plasman throws over, to mind you, Fairly fast. The, the is, I, boys and well girls are usually in the gym up until God knows what time and Plasma again throws over back safely. The ball bounces away from Bosselman. But they come out here probably two hours before the game to hit in the cage and you know get loosened up. So they're cruising in here on two or three hours of sleep generally. <laughs> One oh Pitch is swung on and the strike. One ball, one strike, nobody out. Plasman gets the sign, pitches from the stretch. Runner at first, 1-1 one, one pitch, hit first base side. Bosselman over, has the ball go off his glove. Recovers, not in time. Cam Fuller reaches. Marlon down to second. Fuller on at first. Top of the Archers lineup. Parker Moore. That was one of those kind of was hit in no man's land there. Bosselman came off the bag. Tried to field it. Hit the heel of his glove. Even if he fields it, I think it'll be a race to first base with him and Fuller. Pitches outside to Parker Moore. Ball one. One ball, no strikes, nobody out. 3-1 Rams here in the top of the six. Pitches swung on, foul territory. First base side, Bosselman gives chase, hits the fence hard, pops up. Hunter appears to be all right. So he is back to his first base position. Dalton Wolfram goes out to talk to Plasman to give him just a little bit of a breather. You're not here, fellas. 3-1. Rams with a single run in the second and two in the fourth have a precarious 3-1 lead here. Square around the bunt, bunt perfectly placed, third base side, Plasman up with it, has to eat it, has no play. Infield single for Parker Moore. That loads him up for the Archers. Marlin at third, Fuller at second, and Parker Moore is on at first with an infield single. Bases full of Archers with nobody out. Gonna bring up the number two hitter, shortstop Carton Ultimus. <laughs> Ultimus, 0 for two, struck out his last plate appearance. And if you want anybody at the plate in this situation, if you're Coach Feesby, it's probably Carson Ultimus. Swung on and miss. All tipped into the glove. Plasman comes set, gonna work from the, the set position with the bases full. Now he steps off. Plasman steps off, Ultimus steps out. They reset, they're both ready. Plasma looks back at the runners, 0-1 pitch, swung on. It's gonna be an infield fly. 
called. Radzik calls off Ward, puts it away for the first out. That's a huge out. First out here. Ultima pops out to Radzik is short. Reed Leachty steps in. Reed is 0 for 2. Reed also bats from the left side. Marlon at third, Fuller at second, and Parker Moore is at first. Rams lead by two here at the top of the sixth. Pitch inside corner, strike called. Swung on, fouled third base side. Plasma in the head of Reed Leachty. No balls and two strikes. One out here in the top of the six. Three one Rams on top. Three runs, just one hit for the Rams, one error. Archers have one run on two hits. Slew of base runners here, just no runs have scored. Plasman's come set, he steps off. Lady Rams with a two nothing win next door. Plasma comes set, 0-2 pitch coming to release to Ethan is on deck for the Archers. 0-2 pitch, drilled center field, actually still in the little bloop on the infield. Luke Harris over there to put it away for out number two, looked harder hit than what it was, so Harris, the big out. Gonna bring up Ethan Leach, he is 0 for 2. Ethan, the big first baseman for the Archers, steps in. Base is still full of Archers and two out. Time out as Rams head coach Brent Reynolds going to come out, have a conversation with his senior starter, Eli Plasman. Plasman had the bases loaded with nobody out. Has retired Ultimus and Reed Leachty. Now we're going to face Ethan Leach D with archers on every base and the Rams leading by a score of three to one. Rams next game scheduled for Saturday at Kaleida. We're looking forward to the Holy Name Ballpark over at Kaleida. Remodeled, redid the field two years ago and they are doing the grandstands as we speak actually. Ethan Leach, he digs in, bats from the right side of the plate. 6-4 listed, first pitch. Swung on tap, third base side. Ward scoops it up, there's a race to third base and he beats Jacob Marlin for out number three. In the inning for the Archers, no runs. They had the bases loaded and nobody out and they do not score. One hit, no Ram errors, and the Archers leave them loaded after five and a half here at Sonora. The Sonora Rams on top by a score of three to one, and we'll be back right after this timeout here on Sonora Rams Live. The Firestone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Firestone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Randall. 
Uh, but magic act by Eli Plasman last inning to get out of that inning. Bases loaded, nobody out for the Archers. Rams with a 3-1 lead. And Plasman retired 2-3-4. and four. Ultimus, Reed Leachty, and Ethan Leachty, the meat of the order, did not score. 9-1-2 for the Rams, Gus Weiler, Mosier, and Razik to face Parker Moore. Moore came in relief of Reed Leachty in the fourth inning. First pitch to Grady was a ball. Wind up in the pitches. Ball two outside. Two balls and no strikes to the Rams number nine hitter, center fielder Grady Gusweiler. Pitches outside. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Grady back to back walks, walked in the second and walked in the fourth and scored. Moore's pitch inside. Down the first base goes Grady Gusweiler. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier. Aiden's been on base three times, reached on the air in the first inning and has walked back to back times, walked in the second and in the fourth. 3 1 Rams lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Parker Moore from the stretch. The lefty fires is outside. Ball one. Gus Weiler always a threat to go. One zero pitch in breaking ball inside corner strike one called. Lady Rams with a two nothing win next door. Rams trying to cap it off. Oh great, he was leaning. Parker Moore threw over. Gus Weiler dove back safely just to the head of the tag by Ethan Leachty. Parker Moore's one one to Mosier. Check swing strike two called. Nice crowd on hand here this Thursday. Rams, I have you here. Archers and Wayne Trace all tied atop the GMC standings last year. We're gonna have a balk on the play. So Grady's gonna trot down to second base on the balk. So Rams with a runner in scoring position with nobody out to see if Coach Renolette wants to bunt Grady over to third. Mosier, your perfect candidate for a bunt here with Caden Radzik on deck. One and two right now. One ball, two strikes, nobody out here. Archer fans getting a little rowdy down there. <laughs> <laughs> the previous inning, BR was giving a little bit of business to the ump. One, two pitch, swung on, little shallow fly ball. Reed Leachty comes over, dives, can't make the play. Unable to advance is Grady Gusweiler. Grady played it safe. So a bloop single for Aiden Mosier. Rams with runners at first and second, and Caden Radzik steps in. Radzik with a walk in the first, sing, RBI, RBI single in the second, and a fielder's choice RBI in the fourth. 3-1 Rams lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Radzik bunts right back to the pitcher, only plays at first base. Moore, high throw, not in time. Dylan Hines, the Archer's second baseman, was just a split second late getting over to first base. Parker Moore threw over there, and the throw was just a little bit off allowing Razik to reach. So Gus Weiler is at third, Aiden Mosier's at second, Caden Radzik is on at first. Timeout on the infield, the, the Archer infield is gonna get together, have a little conversation. Don't bring up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram coming into the game was the Rams hottest hitter over the last week, collected eight RBIs this week, was back to back Higby embroidery player of the game Monday and Tuesday. Monday versus Montpelier. Actually, the best play that Dalton's made this year is probably his catch out there in right center field that he made on Monday versus Montpelier. So Wolfram comes in, batting 422, has 14 RBIs. Bases full of Rams, nobody out. Pitch to Wolfram, outside right, corner, strike called. Right, lad, Dalton. Go, Come on, Dalton. Archer defense playing in at the would be cut at the grass, cut of the grass, here on the artificial grass. 
Swung on and missed. Nice breaking ball inside. Swung on and missed. Wolfram behind. No balls and two strikes to Parker Moore. Moore shakes off his battery mate three times. Eli Reinhardt finally gets a sign he wants. Wolfram steps out. Wind blowing from right to left here. 62 degrees at the start. 0-2 pitch to the plate to Dalton Wolfram outside. Backhand stop by Eli Reinhardt. Saved a run. Archer infield playing in with the 3-1 deficit here in the bottom of the sixth. They can't afford to give up any more runs. Play at the plate on the infield for the Archers. 1-2 to Wolfram. Swung on, hit right at the first baseman. Ethan Leach, he comes home, throw it back to first base, not in time. So they cut down Gus Wiley at the plate for out number one. Runners move up on the fielder's choice. Wolfram is at first, Radzik's at second, and Mosier is at third. This is the fourth time the Rams have had the bases loaded here today. 3-1, Rams lead here. Base is still loaded, Taron Ward steps in. Pitch is a little bit up and outside. Ward doesn't agree, strike one. Taron, 3.59. Coming in, he's 0 for 3 tonight. 10 RBIs for Taron. Pitch by Parker Moore is a little bit low. Eli Reinhardt scoops it up. One ball, one strike. One out, bases full of Rams. Archers had the bases loaded at the top of the inning with nobody out and did not score. One, one pitch, Ward taps it, shortstop side, Ultimus throws it over to second for the force, relay, not in time, the Rams get a run. Aiden Mosier scores, run number four for the Rams, they lead four to one. RBI for Taron on the fielder's choice. So he's on at first base, and down to third base is Caden Radzik. Alex Shoblin steps in. Shoblin walked in the first, grounded to third in the third, and struck out his last appearance in the fifth. Four runs, three hits, and one error for the Rams. One run, two hits, two errors for the Archers. Lefty Moore comes set. There goes the runner, Ward, throw down. The second is not in time. So Ward with the stolen base. Rams trying to steal a run there, but with the rocket down to second by Reinhardt. Uh, Radzik at third could not score. 0-1 pitch to Shoblin. Check swing, strike two called. Takes one, come on here. Come on. 4-1 Rams, bottom of the sixth inning. Parker Moore's 0-2, stays a bit inside. One ball and two strikes. Rams have added one here in the sixth. One ball, two strikes, two out. Parker Moore. That way. One, two pitches inside. Count is even at two and two. Got gremlins around here. Boom, oh, just starts talking. Swung on and missed by Shoblin. Down go the Rams and Shoblin. That's a third out, but the Rams get one run and all that ruckus that inning. And they do so on two hits. No errors and Rams leave two on base. Rams have left a nine runners on base through six. Top of the seventh we go here at Sonora High School on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The Rams four and the Antwerp Archers one. We'll be back right after this time out. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419. 
Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Top of inning number seven here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Rams with a four to one lead. Five, six, and seven for the Archers. Eli Reinhardt, Dylan Hines, and Aiden Leachty to face Eli Plasman. Plasman has gone the distance, allowed one run on two hits. First pitch, swung on, drilled right at Mosier and left. Takes a couple steps back, makes a head high catch, and puts it away for out number one. Uh, Houdiniak last inning by Plasman. Bases full of archers, nobody out, and they did not score. Dylan Hines 0 for 2. Plasman winds it up. First pitch. Swung on, hit to center field. Gusweiler cruises over. He calls it off Mosier and puts it away. Two pitches, two outs here in the seventh inning. Now batting number two, Aiden Leachty. Archers down to their final out. Aiden Leachty steps in. So with the win, the Rams will clinch at least second place in the GMC. Overall, Wayne Trace. Swung on and missed. Plasman's first pitch to Aiden Leachty. Tegan Marlin on deck, but the Rams do not want to see Marlin with this four to one lead. Plasman's pitch. Strike two called. Final pitch, or final pitch. Final strike for the Archers, down to their final strike. 0-2 pitch by Eli, swung on and fouled off. Third base side. No balls, two strikes, two outs here at the top of the seventh inning. Rams with a three-run lead, four to one. Plasman comes, gets the sign. He winds it up, his 0-2. Foul back, count stays, no balls and two strikes. Go two. Listen earlier, nice crowd here on Thursday. Sunshine and 62 degrees, 0-2 pitch coming from Plasma and inside ball one. One ball and two strikes. Plasma rocks is one, two. Bit outside, count evens at two and two. Eli working quickly, 2-2 two -two pitch. Fly ball, same spot. Mosier this time cruises over, puts it away for out number three. Three fly outs here in the seventh. Retire the Archers in the inning for the Archers. See you, coach. No runs, see you. Yep. See you, Jake. For the Archers, no runs, no hits, no ram errors, and nobody left on base. Final from Tenora's group field. Rams four, Archers one. Rams improved to 11 and three. They go to five and two in the GMC here in the final contest for the GMC season. The Archers fall to seven and 10, and they will finish four and three in the GMC. Stay tuned, coming up, we will have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments post game show, and we will do it right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Welcome to the Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services post-game show. Rams four and the Archers one. 
we said Rams pick up win number 11 yeah. on the season and they finished the GMC season at five and two that guarantees that they will finish at least in second place <laughs> behind Wayne Trace as we said that broke the five-year reign that the Rams have had on the GMC title with the Wayne Trace Raiders all right GMC champs for the year 2023 season. Right. Here, yeah, you too, you the Rams yeah, you and if I'm our game, let's score a run in the second inning to break yeah, open a 0 0 contest. Yeah, we'll Had the bases loaded two times, finally broke through with a run scored by Hunter Bosselman in inning number two. Archers came right back. Cam Fuller with a solo home run in the third yeah, inning to tie the game at one. You guys. Yeah, and it stayed that way until the fourth inning oh, yeah. where Eli Plasman and Grady Gusweiler both scored to give the Rams a 3-1 lead. Archers had a golden opportunity in the top of the six to make some noise. They had the bases loaded with nobody out. And the harder their lineup coming up, Carson Ultimus, Reed Leachty, and Ethan Leachty, three, two, three, and four in the lineup for Coach Friesby. And Eli Plasman did not allow a run. Got Ultimus to pop out on the infield to Radzik is short. Got Reed Leachty to pop up to second, Luke Harris. And then Ethan Leachty was retired for the final out in the six. So Houdini act by Eli. And then the Rams put it away with a single run in the six. Aiden Moser scored on a Terran Ward fielder's choice. For the Rams, or for the visiting archers, one run on two hits. They stranded just three. All three of those were in that sixth inning. And for the Tenor Rams, four runs on just three hits for the Rams. They committed two errors, and the Rams left nine on base. Winning pitcher Eli Plasman. Fantastic performance by Eli here tonight. He goes to two and one on the season. And the loss will go to Reed Leachty of the archers stay tuned don't go anywhere we'll have the higby embroidery player of the game coming up and we will do that right after this time out from good friends at higby embroidery Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Group Field. Here at Sonora High School, the Rams with a 4-1 victory over the visiting Archers of Antwerp. Welcome to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. Your Higby Embroidery Player of the Game tonight will be senior righty Eli Plasman. Plasman really only was in trouble one inning. That was the sixth inning where he said the Archers had the bases loaded with nobody out, and Plasman got... The meat of the order, Ultimus Reed Leachty and Ethan Leachty retiring those three in order, not allowing a run. One run for Eli. That was a solo home run in the third inning by Cam Fuller. He allowed two hits. That was a single, or that home run by Fuller, and then a single by Parker Moore in the sixth inning. Walked one and struck out two. One thing about Eli, he's not really going to blow the ball by you by any means, but he's going to keep you off balance, as we've seen tonight. Keep the ball in play. Rams defense does the work behind them, with the exception of that uh, third inning on Saturday versus Napoleon. But for the most part, the Rams defense is pretty much locked tight. So your Higby Embroidery Player of the Game tonight goes to senior righty Eli Plasman. So congratulations to Eli. Said Rams finish their GMC season at five and two, where the Archers will finish at four and three. Rams pick up win number. 
11. They are 11 and 3, and the archers fall to 7 and 10. Thank you for listening and watching as always. Thanks to our fantastic sponsors, BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maui Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza and Nay, Fairchild, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Patton Stevens Body Shop, Snore Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished, Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Financial Services, and Mech. Start your Mech career today. Go to mechcareers.com. $1,000 sign on bonus for those looking for a job. Lady Rams victorious next door by a score of 2 0. We'll see everybody, weather permitting, on Saturday from Kaleida over there at the new Holy Park Field. Make sure you bring a chair because I don't think that uh, talking to Adam, Mr. Adam Huber, over at Kaleida, that the stands will be ready. So bring a chair if you're headed to Kaleida and probably a towel because it could be wet. Rams. 4-1 over the archers. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.